So this is round three of me trying to record a food blog. I honestly don't know if this is going to be my format moving forward, but I'm at, at a point where I just want to get this done, not because I don't care, but because when you're doing something for the first time, it's like the first time is the hardest. And it's like, if I can just get over this hurdle. Everything else will be a lot easier. So I know that this probably isn't the greatest, but I want to get it done. I want to get my first food blog under my belt. And so, uh, like I said, this is round three. I'm not even going to talk about those first two attempts. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing for today is um, basically showing a, a recipe video that I've um, posted as a short. It was on um, YouTube, TikTok, Insta as a short. So it's like a one minute video, but I have a longer version of the video that's you know, been edited so that you can follow along a little bit better. It's about an eight or nine minute video. So I'm going to be showing that and basically giving you my commentary, explaining why I'm doing the things that I'm doing in the video. That's why I'm doing this. Um, I'm not creating anything like new with these recipes. Um, like I said, I don't even know if this is going to be my format moving forward. I know there's going to be, um, based on some footage that I've um, gathered, some of these might be me doing my food prep or, you know, just different little things. But for now, I wanted to do something very simple since this is my first time doing it. And so um, these recipes that I'm showing are basically me preparing food based on the limitations and restrictions that I have. So like I said, I'm not trying to rewrite the book or anything like that. I'm just going to be doing things and based upon what my limitations are. So let's just go ahead and get into it. And I'll say more as we go through the video. All right. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause right there. Um, I don't know it right now, but I will make sure that it shows up on the screen, the name of the song. And I'm basically just using royalty free music through my different videos. So if you saw my first reading blog of the year, I used um, a royalty free version of um, Old Lang Syne because it's, you know, New Year. And so um, I'll be using little um, song snippets like that. I did want to explain one thing about the video. So like I said, there is a short that's on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, and it's one minute. The video that we are watching right now that I'm going to be giving commentary on is like an eight or nine minute video. And so that full video without this commentary is available over on Patreon. So if you would like that video without this commentary, you can get it from there. You don't even have to be a member. It's free to my paid members, but I have a little shop there where you can just, um, you know, download it. So that's, you know, there. Anyway, <laughs> um, so here, this angle that I'm shooting at, I don't know if I'm going to stick with this angle. I'm going to be trying some different things over the next couple of months. So like I said, this is very much, if you did notice, my theme for the year is I'm a whip, I'm a work in progress. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Another little pause. So here, this is where I'm showing just the main ingredients. There will be more, we'll see that. But I've got an English cucumber, non-fat Greek yogurt, fresh dill, black pepper, salt, and hing. That is a spice that I have to order online. It comes from India. I believe it is a fermented fennel root that has been dried. And the reason that I use hing is because when you cook with it, it gives off an allium type of flavor, meaning that um, if you're looking for something that's kind of oniony, kind of garlicky, this will give you that result. Now, it's not exact, it's not 100%, but it's very reminiscent. The reason why I use this spice is because I can't have onion and garlic. Um, it's very much part of my acid sensitivity that I have. And so um, I don't use it in all of my cooking only use it in things where I feel like that particular allium flavor is essential. So if it's something that isn't essential, then I'm not going to use it. But for this recipe, even though um, traditional tzatziki recipes don't contain garlic, um, a lot within the past, I would say 10 or 20 years, the last two decades, garlic has been included in them. And so like the first time that I um, had 
tzatziki sauce, it had garlic in it. Cause I remember the next time I had it, it didn't. And I noticed the difference. I mean, it was still good, but it's like, I noticed the difference. And so what I, rem I, if I remember going back, it was like the restaurant that I had it at, that was something that they did is they put a garlic in theirs. So anyway, um, so I tried to mimic that flavor with this spice and I'll talk about that some more as we get through it. Here we go. Clearing away some items here so I can make space. All right, and so here I am fighting with the wrapper of my um, English cucumber. Um, I don't know why it was just like did not want to come off, but I like getting the individual of the pre-wrapped English cucumbers for this. It's just convenient. Um, don't have to do any like measuring or anything like that. Stop right there. So um, for this recipe, you could use one of those regular like thick cucumbers that you use in like salads, but you would have to scoop out the middle um, part before you go further. Um, cucumbers are very watery, which you're going to see in this um, video. If you used one of those, um, it, it would just be more watery or has a, have a lot more seeds too so um i leave that up to you really ideal for this recipe is going to be an english cucumber also i've used what you it there things are labeled different in different stores i've seen them labeled as persian cucumbers i've seen them labeled as um, asian cucumbers i personally feel like they look like pickling cucumbers so i don't really know whether they're Asian, Persian, or pickling, but if you get those kind of cucumbers, they're really good for making tzatziki sauce with. Um, I just usually, like I said, as my go-to, I'll get one of these um, individually wrapped English cucumbers and go with that. And so what you'll see now is I've got a little bag off to the side and I'm gonna be gathering my scraps. I don't like to waste anything. Once I started this whole process of cooking pretty much like all my food, um, I just would be like so heartbroken by all the stuff I was just throwing away. And I'm like, there's got to be something I can do. And so just a little bit of a research online, finding out a lot of that stuff, um, you can get at least two uses out of it by using it in a stock or a broth. And so I do that. I even make compotes and things like that. Like I just, I do not like to waste things. The only thing I'm not currently doing is composting. And that's because my husband is not into it. And I will say in his defense, I haven't really been on board with us setting up our home garden, but once we get that home garden up, whether he's into it or not, we will be composting because I just, I just can't just see just throwing so much stuff away. So anyway, that's where we are, me gathering up my scraps because I'm peeling the cucumber now. And I do suggest um, for this recipe, peeling the whole cucumber, but I know some people like some of the skin. So a little bit of it, maybe you could do like um, strips, um, stripes, I mean, <laughs> you could do stripes with it. So we're some skin, some not, it's up to you. Um, there are certain recipes where I like to have like the striped cucumber um, if I'm eating it raw, but for the tzatziki sauce, just take it raw. The ends of my cucumber and again I'll waste up I actually like the taste of cucumbers you see me taking a bite there <laughs> and so I just have myself a little snack then I cut it in half to make it more manageable so now I have a container and a cheese grater and I'm gonna grate this cucumber I'm shredding it directly into this container um, that's just gonna be the easiest way for me to you know do that and I'm using my hands if you want to use some kind of protective equipment you can just do it but that's what I'm doing here and I'm shredding as much of that as I can down to the point where I don't want to my fingers hurt and then whatever I have left is going into my stockpile that's going to go into my vegetable so now I'm adding salt directly to the shredded cucumber and this is going to help release moisture um, at this point a lot of people would go ahead and like wring the cucumber but I'm putting the salt in it right now as you can see there is no standing water in this container but when we come back to it later there's going to be standing water in it because I've pulled out excess moisture by thoroughly mixing in that salt and it doesn't matter how much salt you use because it's going to get rinsed out but you don't need to use too much set that aside and now I'm just kind of processing my dill 
Um, I think the stems of the dill are edible. And if I wasn't making to the ESOS, I probably wouldn't mess with the stem too much. But I'm going for like a texture thing here. So I'm pulling it off of the stems. Those stems are going to go into my sauce pot. They're not going to be thrown away. So just know that. Um, I'm not using my whole batch of dill here. Um, that extra dill, again, I'm going to use it later for a salad or sauce or something. All right, so let me pause for a moment. I'm pulling up my hang here. So as you can see, my dill has been separated from the stems, but I haven't cut it yet. I'm waiting until right before I'm ready to use it. I'm gonna go ahead and process my um, um, hing now. Taking exactly measure it, one teaspoon of the hing spice directly from the container. So as you see, it says it needs to be activated before use. When you open up your hing for the first time, it's gonna punch you in the face. <laughs> it is not a pleasant smell. It's I'm just that's just the easiest way to explain it. However, once you activate it, um, once it's been like fully cooked and everything, um, it does become more fragrant. It resembles something more like I said, like onion or garlic, but straight out the gate, it's not like that. Um, so um, because I don't want to risk that having that bitterness or that aroma in my food, I always activate it first. A lot of recipes say you can add it directly to what you're cooking. As long as it's being cooked, it should be fine. I'm not risking it. I always activate my hing first. Usually I'm doing that on in a dry non-stick, dry non-stick skillet. And on a, like a medium heat and I'm just kind of, you know, moving it around in the pan until it, um, changes color slightly but mostly I'm just waiting for it to become like fragrant I don't want it to smell like it smells when it comes out of the container and so that's how I would normally do it just like on a day-to-day -day. for this video I did want to use a microwave um version of it just because I wasn't sure how like the camera angles and stuff have gone but just so you know I did I have tested this microwave version before I did this video so sometimes I just I'm like too lazy to pull out the skillet and I do the microwave version but I do prefer the results that I get using it in the skillet. But this for this um, basically tzatziki sauce, like a dip or whatever, it works fine. So you don't wanna use too much of this. Um, one teaspoon is like the maximum amount that I will use in a recipe. Sometimes I use half a teaspoon. Um, I cannot recall a, a situation where I've used more than that, but who knows, I might be wrong. So anyway, um, for this microwave version of activating the hing, I'm putting it into my container, a little cup here. I'm gonna be putting it for 30 seconds and I'm gonna do that three, four, I believe. I ended up doing it four times. You have to stir it each time because it is releasing moisture and it could be like sticky. So I'm gonna do that. And so after I've fully activated my hing, then I come back and chop my deal. Well, that's what I'm doing, chopping my deal, chopping my deal. Okay, so before I add the deal to the spice mixture, I'm gonna be mixing in other things. So let's see, stir up that hing just to make sure it's really, okay. So now I'm putting in half a teaspoon of salt. Um, that might seem like light. I'm not really sure if you've made tzatziki sauce before, but remember, um, I'm making mine a little bit different than traditional. And so I have to find different ways to get like, you know, flavor and things like that. And um, for the how I'm going to be using this and preserving it, that half a teaspoon of salt is going to be right on point. Okay. And so I'm adding that to the mixture. All right. Now, here's the funny part. Um, I'm supposed to be adding in half a teaspoon of pepper. However, as you you might be able to tell because it's going to go by fairly quickly i ended up putting in a whole teaspoon of black pepper that is just too much however it actually worked for me this time i think by mistake i created a spicy tzatziki sauce version that i will probably make in the future but for a very specific reason so what i have found is that because it's got too much black pepper in it it doesn't work as a dipping sauce and that's what I mainly use it for as a dipping sauce but 
I've been putting it on eggs. It's actually quite delicious on some eggs. Um, I've been putting it in wraps and salads. And so I guess when it's mixed with all that like lettuce and stuff, it works out or whatever, but just to have like a chip in, or a cracker or something and dip in it, the pepper is too much for that. So just know that when I normally make this, I only put in half a teaspoon and I just mismeasured this time. I put in a whole teaspoon, but it worked out. I've been using it. And so in the future, I'm going to stick with my traditional measurement for that unless I want to have a spicy tzatziki sauce. So here we go. Back to that. And now I'm adding in the dill. So this is all of the chopped fresh dill. Now, let me go ahead and pause. So normally when I make this recipe, so again, um, I thought I had fully prepared for this, but clearly I didn't. Um, I usually will have a combo of fresh dill and I, I don't measure it out. And I know I need to do that moving forward. I got to measure stuff out. I just kind of guesstimated how much dill I wanted to use. And so what you saw in the video is what I would normally use. In addition to that, though, I usually will be adding in about a tablespoon of dry dill. And I just, I forgot, um, I try to update my spice rack on a regular basis because spices and herbs are really important to me now that I can't use basic things like onion and garlic to add flavor. Anyway, I forgot that I was out of dry dill. And so I just didn't have any this time. And um, I do notice the difference. I mean, it's still tzatziki sauce. Like I said, it's still good. Like I'm, I've been using it all week, but um, anyway, um, just know that normally this fresh dill that I'm using, I would also be adding in um, a tablespoon of dry dill. And I don't have that this time. All right, gotta scoop in all of the dill. Okay. And so very quickly, you see that I have a little spice thing of dry parsley. Now, this is something that I have no idea where I got this from. I don't know if I saw this in a recipe or anything like that, but I just know <laughs> that the first time I tried to make my own tzatziki sauce for whatever reason, I just did like that with some dry parsley. So I've always done that. It's not an exact measurement. I literally just open it up and I do like that. And I just have always added a few flakes of dry parsley. So that's what this is. You don't have to do that. It's just kind of, it's one of those things where it's, I guess it's like a tradition. I don't know. So that's what's happening here. One, two, there you go. <laughs> All right. Now let's look at the, look how much liquid is in there. That was, I just set it aside while I've been doing this other stuff and we got to get rid of all this liquid because that is not going to be good. Whether it's a dipping sauce or a spread, that is too much liquid. That's going to make whatever you're making slimy. Ain't nobody got time for that. So here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is just run it through a regular strainer. That's going to be the first water extraction. And you see, I have it in a little ball there. I've extracted as much water as I can from there. All right. I'm gonna pause for just a moment and just mention that normally when you see this step on like YouTube or Food Network and different stuff like that, people have like a nice clean white cloth that they're using. I'm sorry, the towels in my kitchen are predominantly blue. So that's what I'm using. It is a clean towel. So make sure you're using a clean dry towel, but mine are blue. That's just my kitchen. So this is the second water extraction process. And as you see, I am squeezing, look at all that liquid coming out. You wanna get as much of that water out as possible. You do not want that in your sauce. It's not gonna refrigerate well, it's gonna separate, it's gonna make it slimy. You wanna get as much of that out as possible. Because what you're left with is just this punch of cucumber flavor. People don't think of cucumber having a lot of flavor because it's a mild flavor, but it does. And all that water would just diminish that flavor. You don't want that. So let's add in that spice mixture that we made earlier, all of that different stuff. We're just scooping it directly into it. And I'm going to spend a few minutes actually mixing this in. I want to make sure it gets nice and homogenous. I don't want too much black pepper on one side, you know, too much of this over there. I want to mix all of that really well. Let it blend in with that cucumber flavor before I add the next ingredient. So that's what's happening here. 
All right, so now I'm gonna add in a teaspoon of lime juice. I do have to watch my acid intake, but because it's such a small amount and this isn't like, let me pause. This isn't something where I'm not gonna be consuming this product all at once. Like if this was, let's say a salad, um, that um, teaspoon of lime juice might be too much for me to consume all at once. But this teaspoon of lime juice is gonna be spread across multiple things so far. I've put it on, I've, I've put it on eggs twice. I've put it in two different wraps. So there's a teaspoon of lime juice that's being spread across multiple meals as opposed to having it all at once. That amount of acid, my body can process. What it's gonna do for this tzatziki sauce is help it keep its color. It's gonna help it preserve. It's gonna help it refrigerate well. It's gonna just in, enhance the overall quality of it. So even though I do have to watch my acid intake and my fat intake and a bunch of different stuff, I can still have those things. I just have to be smart about them. So in it goes, mix, mix, mix. And now the yogurt. So as you see here, I am using one cup of non-fat yogurt. So let me toss. Most traditional tzatziki recipes call for full fat yogurt because it's delicious. But again, I have to watch my fat intake. So um, I want to be very clear that I am not on a non-fat diet. Like I still consume fat, but I have to pick and choose where I want that fat to come from. So let me put it to you this way. If I used full fat yogurt in this tzatziki sauce recipe, and then I make myself a wrap for lunch, I can't put bacon in that wrap because all of my fat is coming from the yogurt <laughs> and I would rather have bacon in that wrap. And again, not to like be crazy about this. When I am consuming bacon, it is like so thin, you can almost see through it. But for me, it's just enough to know that I can have that bacon if I want to, because I'm using the non-fat yogurt instead. A lot of recipes for like salad dressings and things like that calls for you like mayonnaise and stuff. I use non-fat yogurt because I have to watch where I'm getting my fat from. So again, I'm not on a fat-free diet, but I do have to watch where my fat is coming from. And I would rather have an extremely thin strip of bacon um, in, a, in a wrap than um, have full fat yogurt. So these are the choices that I've made. All right. So here I am making sure I'm getting as much of that yogurt in there. Again, I don't want to waste anything. I want as much of it. I want that creaminess. And so I'm scooping it out. And then I'm going to, again, you'll notice here in just a moment, I'm going to start mixing. There we go. I have no idea why I have two different spoons. I know there was a reason. I just can't remember what it is right now. I think it had something to do with the fact. Oh yeah, it's just, I remember now. So the one spoon already had like the spices and stuff on it. And I didn't want to risk any of those spices coming out in the um, container. So I left that there. So I would rather the yogurt go into the container where the spices already go. I know I'm probably overthinking this, but trying to get as much flavor as I can. You don't realize how much flavor your food is missing until you are missing essential ingredients like onion and garlic. Like, and the crazy thing is garlic is so good for you. Like I have to rely on supplements now because a lot of the nutritional benefit that I used to get from garlic, I'm not getting anymore. Needless to say, <laughs> I spent a long time mixing this again because I want it to be fully mixed. I want it to be fully homogenous because um, now this part, I don't know why I'm smoothing it out. I'm really, I'm, I'm literally about to put this into containers so I don't know why I took time smoothing it out yes I did take a little taste because this is for me I'm making this for me if I was making this for other people I wouldn't have stuck my finger in it but this isn't for other people if I made this this week and then all of a sudden someone come over and said I would like to have let me pause <laughs> I would like to have some tzatziki sauce and hummus I would throw some together real quick or be like, oh, we don't have tzatziki sauce today. Would you like something else? You know, but because I knew I was making this just for me, that's right. I got myself a little taste. So I wanted to pause right here for just a moment where it says one for the fridge and one for the freezer. So again, I've been using this tzatziki sauce all week and um, 
it's been great, but I also put some in the freezer. So next week, if I decide I want some and see, I try not to, um, satiate on things. I don't want to get bored with things. So if I've been having tzatziki sauce all week, <laughs> um, next week, I'm probably not going to have it, but I might want it the week after. And I don't want to go through this process of making it again. I mean, I'm eventually going to have to make it again, but not so soon. So the other one is going into the freezer. I've, I've done this in the past. It works just fine. So what I'll do when I get ready to have it, if I want to have tzatziki sauce on Monday, I'm going to take it out of the freezer on Sunday so that it's fully thawed. And then before I get ready to actually use it, I'm going to stir it up and it's good to go because I took the time to do those two water extractions. There's not excess water in it, you know, so it'll be, it'll work out for me. So anyway, let me just finish out this video. I'm separating it into the two tainers, containers. Um, and yes, this is a completely unsponsored video. Those are um, Talenti containers because they are perfect for freezing and that's why I use them. <laughs> so that's the end of the video. Like it says at the end, I'm a whip, I'm a work in progress. Whew. So like I said, I have no idea what my other food blogs are going to look like. This is my first one of the year. Um, it, there's been so many challenges with me trying to do this. I am terrified of trying to do more, but because I got through this first one, I got it done. I know that I can do more. I don't know what they'll be like, but yeah. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm doing it. Um, I would love to know if you guys have any, um, food restrictions or even just preferences. It's okay to have like preferences in what you eat. I cook things, do it or do things a certain way because that's just how I prefer it. And that's fine. Um, I am working on a book. Um, it's not going to be a cookbook. It's going to be more of a memoir about my journey with my food restrictions, but there are going to be recipes in it and I have contributors. And so I'm excited about that. Um, and so I'm hoping that these kinds of videos will open up conversation about the kinds of things that people are doing to strive, um, to strive, to thrive in the midst of their food restrictions. And so I know one of my contributors has celiac. I know one of my contributors has diabetes, um, other things going on. So it's not like everyone who's contributing is all has the same issues that I have. They're all very different, you know? And so I'm hoping that by putting videos like this out, it'll start conversations. And so um, that's my first food blog, uh, my version of tzatziki sauce. And I, like I said, hoping to do more. Until next time, guys, stay safe and be blessed. Psst, hey, if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel. Give it a like and also leave me a comment. I would love that. Okay, bye.